Hi campers, this is Darren with My RV Works, and today we're in a rainy Port Angeles, Washington, which is up on the Olympic Peninsula, yay, right across from Canada. So this is our winter, our winter just rains. Now I have a riddle, it's what do you weigh by the gallon, pay for by the pound, no, 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 weigh by the pound, pay for by a gallon, carry as a liquid, but use as a vapor. Hmm. Hmm. Propane, yay! So what we're going to work on today is propane. We're going to do a propane test and a flow test. Um, so, let's see, what can we tell you about propane on an RV? It's probably one of the safest gases. Um, I could give you all the specifications and all of the uh, stats on propane and why it's the safest, but let me just tell you a couple of key things about it. If it was minus 44 degrees in this RV right now, very cold, maybe we're in uh, Let's see, we're up in uh, Wyoming or something in the wintertime, which I've been in Wyoming in the wintertime at minus 44. It's freaking cold. But if I had a coffee cup and I had liquid propane in that coffee cup and I'm walking around at minus 44, it's a liquid. It's a liquid in my coffee cup and I'm walking around at minus 44. And as soon as I go into the other room and it goes like minus 43 or minus 42, that cup of coffee cup expands, I think, I gotta check my math, I might be off a of zero, 70 times. I think that coffee cup goes to 70 times, or it might be 700 times. Anyway, gee whiz, wow! So, we use our propane as a vapor, and that's a pretty good return on my investment. I go buy a cup of propane, and I get 70 cups of vapor out of it. That's pretty amazing. What we're going to talk about today is how to do a propane pressure test. And we're going to need a couple tools. What I prefer to use, you can have a manometer, or you can use a slack tube. I prefer to use a slack tube, and we'll zoom in on this, um, about a hundred bucks in the 90s, mid 90s, hundred dollars for something like this. Uh, I've modified it a little bit, and you'll, you'll see what some of my modifications are. Uh, <clears throat> and you can see I've used this quite a bit. If you were to get a manometer, and I can show you what one of those looks like, I probably should have went and grabbed it before we started this video, it's basically a dial thing that has a needle that moves, think of like a speedometer or something, and the needle's gonna move. Well, that device needs to be calibrated, oh, every month, and guess what you use to calibrate that manometer with? A slack tube. So let's just use a slack tube and forget the manometer. Now, there's a caveat. If you're working in cold environments, this is distilled water in this, and that'll freeze. So I have a manometer that I use when it's cold outside because this water here will freeze and it makes this worthless when you're in the field. So I took a quick break. I went and got my manometer, but it's raining outside, so I'm a little wet. But I wanted to show you this manometer. So uh, this being a monometer, or they call it a manifold pressure test, okay? So <clears throat> now what is this inches of water column thing? Let me show you something on this refrigerator, okay? On this refrigerator, if we turn it on, we're going to see right here, it says equipped with LP propane gas, uh, manifold pressure, 11 inches WC. What is that 11 inches WC? If it wasn't raining outside and we were to go outside to our water heater, well, we're going to see another sticker very similar to that. We're talking about 11 inches WC. If we open up our stove top here, we're going to see a sticker. And what do you think it's going to say? Come on, come on. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, we're going to look on here. Where do we look? Manifold pressure, WC, 10 inches, WC. What the heck is this WC? What is this WC? Is that WC Fields? Is that Walter Cronkite? Is that, I don't know. What is WC? I have an idea. Let's use um, water column. Here we have inches of water column, water or mercury. Okay, well, I use water because I can't go through from state to state to state carrying mercury. And water's cheap. So this is going to do inches of water. So that WC is water column. Okay, now watch the green juicy stuff move when I blow into this guy. Okay, so I'm blowing inches of water column into my slack tube. If I were to blow into this, big breath. Mm, is it moving? Yep. Okay, I'm, I'm showing pressure in my lungs are in the, the propane line, okay? How much pressure? How much pressure is in your RV? Wouldn't that be a good question? No. 10 inches of water column, 11 inches there, 11 inches here. Furnace gets 11 inches. So it's almost like they're in cahoots. It's almost like they designed this RV to have 
11 inches of water column. <laughs> Amazing that they could work together. So anyway, so um, what is this pressure of water column? According to my, my, my manometer here, the outer ring is ounces of PSI. The inner ring is inches of water column. So when I'm at about, let's just ballpark this thing, when I'm at 10 inches of water column, which is that black inner gauge, I'm at six ounces of PSI, okay? So 11 inches of water column is about six ounces of PSI, okay? So when, um, when we go get our propane cylinders filled or our ASME tanks filled, how much pressure is in those tanks? Anybody, anybody, anybody in the back, anybody? How much pressure is in those tanks? Let's say it's a hot summer day, you're down south, uh, maybe in Georgia or Florida somewhere, it's really super hot, how much pressure is in those tanks? Let's say you're up north and it's really cold, how much pressure? So the gas law states that the pressure is directly related to temperature, okay? So as the temperature increases and decreases outside, the pressure in those tanks is gonna increase and decrease, okay? So we have on our RVs a two-stage regulator. Well, on this two-stage regulator, I just happen to have one in my back pocket right there. How about that, folks? All your good RV techs should have a regulator in their back pocket. So when we're talking about the pressure in your tank, we don't know what the pressure in our tank is. We, don't, we have no control over that. That's a function of the temperature. So this is a two-stage regulator. For those of us with travel trailers and fifth wheels, you might recognize this as a two-stage regulator. If you've got a Class A or a Class C or maybe even a Class B, it's got an AMSE tank, and it's not going to look like this. It's two-stage, but it's not the auto changeover. Okay, now this one is not working. It's, it's, it's failed all of its tests. So this one, you're going to recognize this one in an upcoming video. I'm going to take it apart and show you what's inside and all those little needles and pins and all this kind of fun stuff. We're going to actually sacrifice this one. But before we did that, we figured we'd give it its 50 minutes of fame and present it in its full form before we take it apart. So this top part up here, we don't know what the pressure is coming to us. The job of this one I don't know if my numbers are exactly correct, but I think what it does is whatever you give it, it brings it down to about 30 PSI. And I, it's nine ounces, complete 30 PSI. I think is where my numbers are. I know those small satellite ones are 30 PSI, so let's just assume. So what the 30 PSI does is it presents it to this one down here. This is where the 11 inches of water column is adjusted. If you take off the screw cap on most of these, different manufacturers have different types of connectors. This one I would use a flat blade screwdriver. Some of them have an Allen key. Some of them is a metal ring. And the manufacturers don't coordinate with each other because sometimes I'm serious, clockwise is more, and sometimes clockwise is less. But if you want to, to adjust your propane pressure, your manifold pressure in your line, this is where that's done. In order to do that, you need a device like this or this manometer to know where that 11 inches sweet spot is, okay? so. That's what the cap's for. That's how you adjust it. I would not recommend adjusting this unless you have a slack tube because you need to have feedback. It'd be like me working on electricity without a meter. I don't know where the amps are. Is that hot or not? I don't know. Let's touch it. So don't adjust these unless you have this. Um, okay, so there, I wanted to show you how you adjust these. Now, the one on this RV, we're going to actually we'll go show you. This is a Class C. He's going to have his is a little different. Another thing I'll point out on these is this is a vent on the bottom that must be within a 45 degree angle down. I've done jobs where they're like this and like this. That's not correct. It needs to be down. So now that we know a little bit of a background on, on LP, now that we know a little bit of background on what 11 inches of water column is, there is a way to test it. Personally, my best choice is to test the propane on the back of the refrigerator. Well, Darren, why do you check on the back of the refrigerator? It's easy to get to. I, could, I have a nice big access cover right there. This is magnetic. I can stick it to the uh, exhaust flue of the thing. But the thing is, folks, it's raining outside and I don't want to go out there. Besides, it's 319 in the afternoon and it's already getting dark outside up in the Northwest. So we're going to use a stove. Now, to check our pressure at the stove, there's a gotcha. There's one thing you got to be careful of. See this thing right here? Guess what that is? That's another regulator. Okay. So a lot of times techs will check propane pressure at the stove from these little buds right here. Well, guess what? They're, they're, not, they're not seeing the big main RV regulator. It's going through this regulator right here, okay? So if you're just looking for a leak, if you're just checking for a propane leak, hey, fantastic, knock yourself out. You can take this off, connect your thing to this, 
turn it on, you can check for your leak. But if you're checking for propane pressure, or do you have 11 inches of water column for your refrigerator, your furnace, your water heater, your stove, you need to get before this regulator. Because this regulator will give you false readings affecting your entire coach. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go turn off the LP to this RV. We're going to disconnect it right here. And we're going to tie into it right here upstream of this regulator so it does not give us a false reading. Whenever you're working with flare fittings or anything like this, double wrench. You need a backup wrench with your wrench. Uh, I don't want to catch you just using one wrench. Wrong, bad. You get, you get no love from there in doing that. So what we're going to do is we got a backup wrench right here. Okay. Uh, this is a cast fitting and this is um, brass. So uh, your backup wrench could be an adjustable wrench or a channel lock. I don't care. Let's see. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. So we're going to go this way. Okay. So see, I'm done with my backup wrench. That wasn't so painful. And we're going to turn this off. I can feel and smell some gas. So now we're loose here, right? So now we can tie directly into the LP and pressure um, system. And I made a little guy right here. You can shoot me an email or a text and I can just tell you what I built and why I built it this way. What we have here, it's a cross. That is 3 8 and this is half inch. So I can, if I'm doing a half inch, I can go in my box here and I can cap off the 3 8 and I can unlock this and now I can work on either size. Okay, That is a drill hole size X. I said X. Um, I don't know what that is, but in the trades, I guess all the different trades didn't coordinate with each other. I don't know what millimeter or whatever, but it's an X size drill bit. And that generates a 50%, it simulates a 50% load in the RV under these circumstances. And then I've got my little valve where I can open and close that. You'll see what we use that for in a minute. And then I basically put this little quick release guy on here so I can just connect and disconnect. So we know that this is 3 eighths. So we're gonna connect this guy to here. What was that thing, Darren, we needed to do? Oh yeah, a backup wrench. Okay, so we're gonna use a backup wrench. Let me reach over here and get a, I think it's a 7 eighths. There we go. Nice and snug. Okay. So now I'm tied into my LP system. And uh, we're going to just, that's a quick connect. So now I'm actually tied into my LP system. And um, so now on our slack tube, if you choose to go with a slack tube, this scale is, you, you can slide this scale up or down. Okay. And what you're looking for is I, I open this valve to let air into both sides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them even with the zero, with the top of the meniscus, even with that zero right there, and um, which which I am. And what we've got in here is distilled water with some green dye. The green dye comes with this kit, and you pour some distilled water in there, and you can go dark green or whatever. But... Okay, so now that we've got everything connected, what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, the propane turned on, and you're going to see this change. So go ahead, Miss Jody, turn that on. Okay, so what we see now is we see the propane's turned on. And what we do is we count up one side and count down the other side. We add those two numbers together to get our size, to get our number. So we're starting with zero, we're gonna go up. That is 6.6, .6, okay? And we're gonna count down, that's 6.6. .6. So 6.6 .6 and 6.6 .6 is 13.2, 13.2. That's greater than 11 inches, isn't it? So our LP pressure is too great. Our LP pressure is too great. Okay, um, if our pressure is too high, I've done jobs where I've done a furnace job and the pressure was too high and it was blowing the furnace out. So you can have a problem with pressure too high, you can have a problem with pressure too low. What was the spec? 11 inches of water column. That's what we're gonna make it. Now, we're gonna do a total of three tests. The first is called a lockout test, which is this. With the propane full on, we wanna know that this is the maximum amount that this RV is allowed to have. The other test we're going to do is a 50% load test, and then we're going to do a leak test. Those are three tests you have to do. So we're going to start with getting this set correctly. Okay. So now we're going to meet you on the outside, and this is another reason I like doing this on the refrigerator, because I'm outside, the adjustments are outside, I just walk over, walk around, I don't have to go in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, but it's raining. So. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go adjust the regulator to 11 inches of water column. And um, so we'll show you how to do it the first time, and then after that, it's, there's no reason in recording me going in and out, in and out, in and out to get this right. But the next time we come back, we'll show you this, how to adjust it, and then the next time when we're done, this will be at 11, which is five and a half and five and a half. Okay, so let's do that. 
So here we have an AS AMSE tank. You saw on a travel trailer or a fifth wheel that automatic changeover thing that has that uh, the screw off piece. This one's under this cover right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop these little rivets off. They're usually just little plastic uh, rivets uh, in automotive style. Well, these are stubborn. Okay, so you see what that is? It's just one of these grippy kind of things. Okay, I might get my rain jacket. And then that just lifts right off. Um, there we go. So as you see, it had to move it a little bit. And there we have our regulator with our vent facing to the bottom. Okay, we'll move him out of the way a little bit. There we go. So it's just this kind of a slot cover. We'll move him. Now we're going to unscrew this and see what kind of way the manufacturer has it set up. So he's a flat blade screwdriver. So let me get one of those and we're going to probably adjust that. So what I like to do things in, in increments. So I'm going to do one complete revolution counterclockwise. Okay. So I'm there. There's a half a revolution. There's one complete revolution counterclockwise. And now we go inside and see what adjustment that, that did. Did either increase it or decrease it. Let's go see. Okay, now we're inside. Now I'm at six and a half, but we don't know that that's a real number. We need to burp it a little bit. So I'm gonna open up, let some air in and close it again. That's kind of gonna reset it. And we're going the correct direction. So you see what burping did. Before we burped it, we were at six and a half. We burped it and it came down. So we are going counterclockwise. It turns out that's the correct direction. So we're, we need to go, that was one turn. Let's do maybe another one and a half turns. So the next time we come back, we'll be right at 11. But you see how we're adjusting this by turning that knob? Sweet spot's 11 inches of water column, okay? So when we come back, we're gonna be at 11. Okay, so what we've done is we've adjusted the regulator. It turned out two complete turns counterclockwise, okay? Now you're gonna look at this and you're gonna say, Darren, you're at six and six, which makes 12, okay? But watch what happens when we do the next test. So the first test was 11 inches of water column. The second test is a 50% load test. What the heck is this 50% load test all about? Let me give you a scenario. Let's say that you're camping and you're cooking a big old pot of Creole red beans and rice. I'm a Louisiana boy, I love my red beans and rice. Got a big old pot of, of Monday uh, wash day red beans and rice on the stove and I got three burners going. My water heater, my wife's taking a shower. She's running that water heater off. Or in this instance, this RV has an on-demand water heater. Therefore, it only heats with propane. So my water heater's on. And my refrigerator is also on propane, okay? Well, it's getting cold outside. So you see we have four appliances in this RV that use propane. The furnace, the refrigerator, the water heater, and the stove. And maybe even we got some biscuits in the oven. We're using a lot of propane, okay? The furnace needs to start. Do we have enough propane pressure to run that furnace? That's what the 50% load test is all about. There's two ways you can do that. One, come in your RV, start your oven, start your stove, turn on your water heater, and then see if you got enough water pressure here to start your furnace. Or the size X drill bit in my thing simulates that 50% load, okay? So what I've done is I've gone up to 12 inches of water column. When I open this valve, I'm simulating that 50% load test. If all these things are on, do I have enough pressure to start my furnace? Now, let me mention this. That furnace is going to consume more propane than all of these other things combined. Okay? I can have my stove, my oven, my water heater, and my, wa and my uh, refrigerator all on sipping propane. That furnace is going to guzzle it. That's the purpose of the 50% load test. So we're going to open this up, and we're going to watch this and see where it goes. Now, let me open up. Let me turn on my vent because I don't want to die from like Anthem or Captain smell. So I've got a fit going on here. So I'm going to open up this to 50% load and you'll see this adjust. It went to five and five, which is 10. Okay. So five and five is 10 with it closed. Six and six is 12. So you see how I'm right in that sweet spot as the temperature changes. Like if we were to wait, we're getting, when we do the leak test here in a minute, that's a three minute test. The reason it's a three minute test is because within three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, the cloud might come over the sky or, uh, it gets dark or it gets hot. If we were to sit here throughout the day and put a, a data logger on this, what we're going to see is these pressures are going to change throughout the day. So whenever we do a pressure test, it's very important that we put the, the temperature outside, which is uh, right now, uh, wrong button, 
We'll figure it out in a second. Outside it is. Give it to me. 48 degrees. So at 48 degrees, at 200 foot sea level, I have this pressure. If we go up in sea level, it's going to change. If it gets colder outside, it's going to change. If it gets hotter outside, it's going to change. You with me? Great. So we just passed our second test. Did you see how easy that was? The first test was 11 inches. The second test is what's my 50% load? Well, at 50%, I still have 10 inches, which satisfies the plus or minus requirement. The third test is the leak test. Leak test is a three minute test. And what we're going to do is we're going to close this. We're going to turn off our propane. Okay? So now we've locked up our system. Okay? And we're going to set a three minute timer. Okay? We're going to set a three minute timer and we're going to monitor this to see if it goes down in three minutes. Now, what we need to do when the propane gets turned off, okay, we need to bleed this out just a little bit. And I want, I want this to come off of that six because right now the propane is off, right? If I don't bleed this out and bring it down to like maybe around five or so, how do I know that that service valve is not leaking? We think it's off. We've already told the regulator to max me out at 12 inches of water column right here. But how do I know that it's off and it's not leaking through? So this is real dicey right here. I need to open this a little bit, and I need when it starts to buck, I need to stop it. Right there, okay? So now I brought it down to five and five, okay? At that point, I can start my three-minute test. I got a three-minute timer going on. So tell me a three-minute story. No, we'll come back in three minutes. But before we get there, what we're looking for is I'm at, I'm at five and five. So in three minutes, I better be at five and five. If I'm not at five and five, if I go down, I have a leak. If I go up, my service valve is leaking. You see how by bringing this down, I can check in either direction, service valve leaking through or a leak in the system. Okay, so we'll be back in two minutes and 30 seconds. Three, two, one. Yay! Okay, so look, we're right where we left. So that tells us there's no leak. We passed our three minute test, okay? So we just did three tests. First one, remember, 11 inches. I made it 12 because at the 50% load, it brought it to 10. So that gives me a two inch water column buffer there. If we would have set it to, if it dropped it to, if I would have set it at 11 inches of water column totally, then I could have dropped down to nine inches and that may not be enough for the furnace to start. So you see how I went up a little bit? Because there's a two inch deviation when I demand 50% of my load off of this. So I go to 12 to make sure I'm gonna hit that 11, okay? So the first test was that. The second test was a 50% load, okay? Now, here's something to watch out for in that 50% load. Propane is a liquid, we use it as a vapor. I have seen where the liquid will work its way inside of the lines in your coach, inside these lines here. Uh, you go to the doctor to have your cholesterol tested and its restriction, your arteries and all this kind of stuff. If that water is a restriction, uh, if, if the oil is a restriction in your uh, lines, it's going to show up when you do the 50% load test. You may have 11 inches of water column, but as soon as you do your 50% load, it drops to like three or two. And if that happens, you've got restrictions in your in your lines, okay? Um, in that instance, go to the far end of your coach, get a, compressed, uh, a, a, a compressor, and disconnect all your hose one way, one air in, one air out. Don't have it going all over the place. And disconnect it from your manifold. I usually blow from the far end. In this coach, the, the tank is forward, the refrigerator is aft. So I would disconnect from the refrigerator and I would blow into the refrigerator and I would blow out all that crap out of the line from the regulator that way. And then I might blow back way. That's how you get that liquid out of your lines. And then you get, you test. And you'll know that you've succeeded when you're when this part works. So there's your 50% load test, test two. Test three, leak test. And again, come off of that pressure a little bit so that you're kind of down. I don't. I, I try to keep it between like the four and a half and the five mark. If it goes too low, that's not enough pressure for me to really test for a leak. So I'm shooting, I'm at 10 inches of water column here. If I were to go up, again, six is full, I'm at 10. If I were to go up to the five and a half or the six mark, which is what, uh, 11 or 12 inches of water column, my service valve wasn't closed all the way and I have a problem there. I have seen that. If it goes down, I have a leak somewhere in my system. If I have a leak somewhere in my system, this is a leak tester. Um, I've got it muted right now, but it, we, we were bleeding out some of this ethylmer captain, so propane, so he's, he's picking up on that gas smell, these little red lines right here. So he beeps on us when he smells um, 
the uh, the propane. Okay, so I got a, I got this fan on above me to kind of get this out to test this because after we put this back together, we need to check for leaks. So you could use a soapy bottle, which I would recommend also. But I like this little gadget because I can if 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 there was a leak here, then I would use this to kind of sniff around all over this coach. We don't know where that leak could be. It could be anywhere. So follow the gas line, stick this in those little holes, and 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 look to see if it detects a leak. So I use this as my first line of defense, and once I get zeroed in on the problem, then I'll use my bottle of soapy water and just use dish soap. It doesn't have to be fancy. The best I've heard is a uh, bubble. You know, you blow the bubbles. You know, I've heard that that works really, really well. Um, I work with whatever's handy, and um, you'll see the bubbles. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to put all this back together, and um, I think we're kind of done. I don't know what more I can add to this. I think we're done. So we're going to basically put all this back together check for leaks, um, and um, try to make a happy camper. So I really hope that this was more information than you ever thought you ever wanted about propane. Believe me, I could go on and on and on about it, but I think you got enough. And um, uh, so with a couple tools like this and some knowledge and some skills, you can basically check your pressure on your water heater, uh, on your propane system. So this is Darren from Port Angeles, Washington, signing off. Happy camper, say my RV works.